Yo, what's going on guys? Welcome back to a brand new video on the channel. Inside of today's video, we're going to be looking back at our day one games in a monthly qualifiers. So the first qualifiers with Drage available, available to play and also with our new roster. So some really big games. We had four games that were against top 16 teams. So some really intense ones. Uh, so I'll be uploading this on the second channel, so the main channel, so no main channel video today, but hopefully you guys enjoy this one. So yeah, without further ado, let's jump straight into it. All right, guys, so heading into the first game up against Esport Empire. So these are a top 16 teams, some really good players who are constantly in top tournaments. So it was really tough, and this was like the third uh, round, so I didn't really expect to play this good of a team early on. So the bands were Stu, Primo, and Bell. I think both teams ban. Uh, Primo out so you can see here we've opted for the B Bali and the Surge just seemed like a lot of people were just playing B and Bali on this map to be a little bit safe Poco is in play as well so you've got to bear that in mind that's probably why they opted for the M's instead of a Surge because uh, in case we went like Poco Double Tank because Poco Double Tank can still blitz through a, a Bali and a B pretty easily so Drage some really nice early aggression he gets a double kill there Tom kind of messes up with his uh, shot there but it's important when you make uh, little errors like that it's just to stay calm. We didn't really mind. I wasn't frustrated. Tom wasn't really that frustrated either. We just kept nice and calm because those things do happen. So search. Uh, but Drage has his third level. That is perfect. He's just waiting for a pinch on those two. So mainly me and B are just going to be one and one engaging. So I'm not really going to be pinching <clears throat> too, too much with uh, Tom. It's mainly just those two trying to win theirs battle. Then every now and then I'll try and get a snipe on Bali when I can. But as uh, Adam and it's quite a close battle between me and B, I probably went too close towards the middle there. Should have just, I need to stay as wide as possible because then Barley just gets more value. So with B, always try and stay really wide. So again, kind of hard uh, after getting pushed back. That was definitely my bad uh, going into the middle. So if B gets a really nice shot onto uh, Tom. I didn't actually remember that. And also, uh, just going into these games as well with some really intense games against like Totem and Bunker at the end of a video. So it's going to be a really long one today, but for. Uh, it'd be really nice to look back and see where I can improve on. So, really nice kill from Drage. That was really clutch because if he hadn't got that uh, kill there and stayed alive, he would have also lost his level. So, he wouldn't have been level 3. It would have been actual level 2. And obviously, that's going to really hurt going into long run. I want to keep that level 4 going into overtime. So, I get a nice slow on the B there. Uh, try and get a tap on him. Don't manage to do so. So, with Bs, with the honey part, if you guys know this interaction, basically, you're going to be able to tank... Uh, free 3k shots from the enemy and then once you're both of you use both gadgets then it's a real fight so you can see here i've got a 3k shot i kind of uh, look to tank one shot so i can get into a decent position uh, to end him off you can just see tom and dredge they're just making sure they're in a good position for overtime so i get a really nice uh shot onto him so you can see here with the aggression i shoot onto b here and i'm gonna get 3k i shoot onto Bali as well so a nice double kill i'm about to get a triple as well but luckily my teammates able to finish it off and we're able to take the first game home uh, really nice play, um, well played you know the first game always going to be a little bit nervy but we managed uh, to play it really well there so let's hop into the next game all right guys jump into the second game of this set and surprisingly i don't think i've ever played colt or face a colt inside of uh scrim or anything on this map so really interesting they probably knew we we're going to stick with a barley or at least to throw it in the middle so really nice pinch from those two guys i couldn't really do too much the reason why i opted for rico as well because we played it a lot in scrims on triple dribble. Rico against a B on the long lane. Rico, honestly, if you play uh, even like uh, half correctly, you're going to be able to beat a B, especially with the bounces on the wall. So we kind of went Rico to counter B, uh, but unfortunately enough, they do go like a wall break on B. If I went B instead of Rico here, it would have been a lot better. But here, we're just trying to hold off. Barley's just trying to get as much value out of the walls as possible. So he's going to go down the right lane, kind of. In a tough situation here. We need to really score before OC because Barley's going to be even more useless in overtime. Uh, so, yeah, they've, they've managed to break up the map really well. I've got a little bit of pressure here. Drage is going to struggle so hard to get his levels, especially when the map is so open. So, he's probably going to try and TP as much as possible to try and get those levels. So, here I'm getting taps up. I'm just trying to make everyone weak here. B is one shot. So, these guys have to fall back. So, we get a nice bit of pressure. Nice wall breaks from Colt. And honestly, this, Colt, this comp just completely throws off guard. This is definitely not a comp. Be expected so these are the type of teams especially in and around like the 8 to 16 range that uh the meta is a little bit different from i would say like the top four teams uh they like to actually switch things up as I, I think the uh lower teams honestly they have some comps that were just like wow that actually was so we do actually learn a lot of playing off these teams but anyways again one minute left not really too much uh going on here Dre's just looking to try and get his third level. If Drake can get his third level, it's kind of if we're going into OT here, 
we're looking for Drage to carry us because he's going to get our third level. He's going to have the most range on our team and he needs to be tapping. So Tom does a good job of pushing up down the lane here. I don't know what B's really opting to do here. Maybe she should have just stayed wider, but she just get caught out. Tom does a really good job pushing up and basically carrying us here. You can see here he's clapping them. He gets a super shot off just to make sure he scores. And 28 seconds left. We should be able to hold on in time. So that was super important, as I said, because uh, going to overtime, Bali against this comp really should get uh, clapped. So Dredge got to level three now. Should be much better. We're able to push up as a team. And uh, yeah, nothing the other guys are going to be able to do. So honestly, these guys played really well and uh, definitely hold their own against us so we were able to take the first set home right there let's hop into the next set all right guys so going into the second set we have minecart madness a bit of a sketchy map because of the uh just, just the way the minecart rules around the map a bit of a weird one so we've opted for a drage mid here the reason we do this uh especially when we go to sprout comp uh drage is more confident on the gene and both of us are really good genes so uh just playing each other's in our most confident positions here so yeah drage can easily play a mid on gem grab or just on every, every map so it's nice to actually have that flexibility it's definitely something that's underrated for the most part you want to stick just set rulers so like uh, a lot of people are wondering like why don't i just go gene no matter what because i play gene all the time but honestly uh it's probably a little bit better to keep fresh on uh some brawlers you don't want to just make your brain go absolutely numb just playing one brawler so getting really nice block off on the gene there forcing him to go down the right it's also forcing Crow in a really uncomfortable position here. He's going to get taken down by the minecart, which I actually didn't see there uh, at all. But we've got some really nice pressure here. Gene has pull, so uh, if they're going to wait for the minecart to push up. Barry probably pushed up a little bit too much for his teammates because he's really low here. I'm pretty close to my wall here, so a really nice pull on uh, from Drage as well. Tom gets some nice slows, giving us a bit more pressure. The main thing you want to do with, with Crow as well, really nice jump as well, managing to get the kill. But yeah, the one thing you want to do most with Crow is to get those slows, especially in the really like crunch time position, uh, positions. I don't even know what the word is for it, but you know what I mean. Like you know, the, the gems are quite even, or like your gene has pull. You want to crow slow them and then try and just take them down as quickly as possible. You want to make sure that your team's in a good position to take those brothers down. And I'm able to get some really nice taps on the gene and crow. They just gave me so much value. I think they probably panicked a little bit too much. So just split out a little bit more. I'm able just to tap them. Gene dredge does uh waste a gene pool there but it's not the end of the world completely because tom's going to jump off pressure again confirm the kill that's really good value for a crow if he's able to at least weaken some of the enemies and get a kill that's going to be amazing gene just misses a pool there uh drage manages to stay alive with his gadget and overall a bit of a messy game honestly like <laughs> looking back at it i didn't think it was this messy uh in game but yeah no way these guys are going to be able to come back they wasted gene pool and unfortunate on the gem uh mine timing if they literally had a couple of seconds they probably could have equaled it but yeah that's going to be the win right there let's hop into the next gem grab game. all right guys so jumping into the uh next game of gem grabs so we've opted with gene max not really the most meta at this current uh point in time but just gene max is pretty good on uh on this map anyways and just especially we probably i think we're considering these guys going a bit more of a control comp especially a sprout and gene max does really well against uh sprout so nice pinch on Sprout here. Sprout definitely overextends. He needs to stay behind that wall for as long as possible. Uh, and he's able to feed me super, which is going to be really hard uh, for them to come back from, especially if you, uh, if you feed this gene straight away. You can see how aggro we're going as well. So, yeah, just a really bad play at the start. It's just going to cost him. Gives me a gene pool really early. I can just probably cycle my pool, especially on Sprout. They've got nothing that they can really dodge me other than a crow jump. So. Tom's going to get the jump on there, getting a lot of pressure for us and it being able uh, for us to pick up the middle gems. Drage going a little bit too aggro there, trying to finish off the kill on Gene. Uh, but Tom's doing a really good job at distracting these guys. He's got his sprout uh, basically covered for now. As you can see, he's dodging his way up. We can't really push up too much because they've got a uh, gene pool in the middle. Tom eventually goes down here. Uh, they're looking for the crow jump. Dredge just trying to get as much value as possible, trying to get that super. Tom, a bit of an unfortunate jump with minecart, but nonetheless, he's in a good position to get the crow slow on the gene. I'm able to get out with my life there. I think I go for the pull on the sprout, which is a really nice pull. Basically makes it a 3v2 on the retake, so we're in a really good position here. Uh, they've done a good job considering the minecart was actually pushing them back, and at the moment, we're actually not even in the best position. Uh, but do we get gene pulled? But gene was really low. Everyone was focusing fire on him. Probably not the best position to take him down. And we're able to collapse on him and get the gems and get out of it. So really close game actually inside of that gem grab one. 
honestly, if I could have played it a little bit better at the start, and I would have been in a much better position. But overall, I were able to take the dubs. So yeah, that's probably the most uh, intense game we've had with Drage so far. Well, like in the first few rounds. Uh, so obviously he's never really played in BSC before. But yeah, that's going to be the first game right there. Uh, that's round three against Esport Empire. Managed to take the uh, dub two to zero. Let's hop into the next game. All right, guys. So jumping into the next game, which is round four against another top 16 team, which are... Uh, uh, comfortably well always in like the top leagues as well we have noble elite so uh we're facing them off on safe zone again the exact same bands as last time both teams banned primo they banned bell we ban stew as you can see here i just use a gadget uh i don't know why i should probably shouldn't have used gadget uh first player sometimes i do it just to annoy the opposition just to get a little bit of pressure but uh most pipers just kind of hold that middle uh anyway because they know i've wasted that gadget and they can just sit in the middle. They know they're not going to get finished off by gadgets there. So I Piper kind of wasted that gadget on Tom. Not really doing too much. I'm able to get a tap in. I don't know really why they've gone B. Uh, B on this map probably to counter Amber. But we kind of uh, knew that they liked playing B on this map. Uh, through just uh, analysis on other comps. And we know if we get a Colt on a B. Uh, it's going to be a good game. So I can see here I get really nice taps on the Colt there. Nice taps on the Piper. And all I get. <laughs> I'm just beaming these guys as you can see i'm just tapping them i'm just absolutely folding them that's what <laughs> that's the time you like to call it uh but anyways we get a nice snipe on colt we get the double takedown as well i'm just gonna jump away here the good thing uh, that you want to do with the piper or the colt you're gonna break those walls in the middle because a lot of times enemies are gonna waste time push up to that wall so you just want to break those it's just much better when you're breaking out of spawn so here, we're in a really good position, 30% up at the moment. Probably go a little bit too aggro there, get a shot there. Also, a good thing to note in a Piper 1v1 is uh, especially to hold your super. Because if you, you get tapped once, you can uh, jump out and save yourself. So he's doing a good job of keeping that super. So B kind of can't go down that lane because Thomas just put his fire over there. That's why Amber's just so good on this map because obviously there's three lanes. And just one super, even two supers can control basically the entire map. So Tom's doing a really good job here. He's just uh, applying pressure with his gadget. It makes them run backwards because an Amber locked onto you with gadget. There's nothing you can do. So I get a nice snipe there. Uh, trying to get more snipes onto these guys. But again, as long as we get a few more kills. Nice uh, super from Dredge. Just need a couple more kills. A couple more uh, deaths or respawns. And they're not going to be doing any damage. So I'm going to focus on the Colt here. Because he's the main damage dealer. I think I do manage to get him down. Which was really clutch. If I uh, wouldn't have got that trade. They probably could have got a little bit of damage. But uh, regardless. They've got no time to actually get us down here. So Drage does a good job to focus fire on the B. Takes him down. And that's going to be the first game going towards. Let's hop into the next game. Alright guys. So jumping on to the next game of safe zone. So we've stuck with the same combination. You can't really change out too much. I think the only brawlers you can really change out. Are the likes of uh, Brock instead of a Colt maybe. Or a Colette instead of the Amber. And then maybe... I don't know, there's not really much more. So they've got Nanny to try and count the Piper. Honestly, he probably wasn't feeling the Piper versus Piper interaction. So he's trying to go with Nanny with the hard counter. But the thing about Nanny is even with his return to send a gadget, a lot of times I'm just going to be able to two tap him much more easily than a Nanny. Piper just gets a lot more uh, pressure. So he's going to have this super here. But on this map, Nanny's much better on a map like Kaboom Canyon because most of the time they're just going to TP yourself into the corner. So I'm just going to eat that super. I uh, know I'm going to get a respawn as well. By the time he's even up into mid, I'm going to be able to respawn. So again, they're not getting much value out of a super. But honestly, uh, Tom and Drage playing really, really well here. I've not really done too much in my mid battle. So against a Nanny as well, I like to gadget first play. Because a lot of times, if you get like the first hit and then gadget, Nanny can just pop gadget and then uh, you're going to be losing that matchup. So one tip as well in a Piper vs Nanny interaction, I found is to gadget first play with a Piper. Because they weren't expected. They won't be popping that gadget on that first snipe so uh john john is able to get the kill there on tom i use gadget on the colt there because i know if we uh get that kill on colt we're gonna have a three v two in our favor so again not much to uh not much to, uh going on here amber's gonna be a weak in the background tom doing a really good job of pushing up i'm really low but i'm still gonna push up into mid just for a bit of pressure even if i die i'm gonna get a decent respawn tom clips uh the colt there really well played from him Dredge just making sure that the Amber doesn't push up. Really well played from Dredge. Look for a snipe there. Literally, if I even breathe into Amber's distance, she's going to kill me in a flash. So I've got to be really careful of that. I'm getting a nice pinch with Dredge here. And then he's going to connect onto Tom, but I'll get a nice two tap on him. I'm going to continue to uh, rain fire on him. Another snipe from me, able to finish him off. And I think from here, it's 
basically nearly impossible for these guys to come back. I uh, get another <laughs> double tap on the nanny as well. So yeah, they really need a miracle to come back from this situation. But we're probably, hey, I don't think it even gets closer. Let's see. I can actually remember what happens in the, uh, in the end here. So yeah, Colt just goes down. I'm just going to jump up for pressure. And yeah, that's going to be GG's. Nothing that the enemy team can really do. So yeah, Nanny, they tried it with a counter pick, but I just don't think Nanny counters Piper on this map. On Shooting Star, I would say Nanny does counter. Uh, but this type of map, I just got rid of his gadgets, got them down, and I'm, easy, I'm able to take Nanny quite easily down. So that's going to be the first set right there going to us. Let's hop into the second set. All right, guys, so heading into the second set, it is a dry season. So the main comp for this map is the exact comp we've gone with Bell Band. A lot of teams just go Gene, Ruffs, and Tick. It's probably the safest comp uh, overall, like, especially as a first game. You don't know whether they're going to go aggro comp or like a double thrower. And this comp can basically... Uh, if played correctly, beat every single comp. Uh, normally other teams go like a Ruffs double thrower or like like a Jean double thrower or I think Poco is in place. So Poco double tank is an option. But uh, with the amount of tick and Jean, it's really hard to get true value out of it. So we're winning in this uh, middle interaction. Uh, probably talked too much at the beginning of here, but the first thing about dry season, which I've said a few times, is that you've got to really focus on the first star because the team normally that gets first star is going to be winning the game. It's just even more so on this map because it's just the defensive walls. The enemy just has to push you. Like, I know it's only one star difference, but as the game goes on, the enemy is just going to be pushing you down. So I get that super here. Uh, again, Drage on the Gene. He's just a bit more comfortable on the Gene than the Ruff. So I don't really mind playing uh, whatever brawler I really need to. Uh, especially as a defensive brawler, I mean, Drage uh, is a more aggressive player. I'm more of a defensive player, so it probably makes sense as a Drage on the Gene. Uh, but we're getting pushed back here, but as long as we're getting HP, we shouldn't be uh, doing too bad. So what we're trying to call out here in BC, if you're wondering, is that we just need to get on mirror lane matchups because Tick's going to provide a really hard time against me and Drage because we can't really pull him because he most of the time he has his head. He has, uh, well, he's just spamming so much. He does a lot of damage, especially with that upgrade now. So 25 seconds left. Basically, nothing's happened. None of us want to make a mistake here. So just chipping each other down. Tom's going to go over there, try and focus on the tick. So this is where things get a little bit messy and pretty scary here. So uh, both genes eyeing each other out, seeing who's going to bait the pull out first. So I'll put my sandbags in mid to try and delay as much time as possible. Tickhead is going to distract him for a little bit. Nice pull from Drage. And we've just got too much HP that they can't really capitalize on it. So they probably left it a little bit too late there. But we're able to take the first game of Bounty, rather. Let's hop into the next one. All right, guys. So going into the next game, as you can see here, we have gone with a Penny pick. So Penny is an amazing counter to Ruffs in this meta. And that's why you've seen probably a few too many times. Uh, again, well, like in Totem games, you probably see them uh, coming up. I don't want to spoil too much. But also, if you just watched this stream earlier on uh, Ox Twitch, you would have seen Totem go a lot of Penny. And it's just mainly for the Ruffs, I think, if I'm not wrong. Uh, Penny can free shot roofs, or if not free shot, make him extremely weak. So just that interaction, especially with the sandbags as well, it's just a really good hold counter to uh, the roofs. And especially how this map is played, uh, as I said, you need to get that first star. If you get that first star, they're going to be pushing onto you constantly. That just invites brawlers like Penny for their super just to be so good. Maybe I should have put my turret in a more aggressive position, but then again, we can just sit back and let my turret do work. So Drage is really weak here. He's barely going to be able to survive, so he's going to heal up uh tom calls out that he needs to be the one to protect my turret so he goes over to the left to help that turret out but sprout with overgrowth is going to be able to shoot around the wall nearly managed to take it out but good aggression from tom able to delay that a little bit longer so again in a really good position here uh they still haven't got that rough set but just narrowly get it now even though my penny turret gets taken down i get some really good splash damage from these guys and i think one shot here i'm trying to get it don't manage to get it in time sprout but that upgrade is scary. He can free tap me. He, and especially with Overgrowth, he's going to be sniping me from across the map. So uh, Sprout's not going to push up here, but uh, Drage has been really clever, just keeping his gene pool for presence. He does get the nice snap on to uh, John John. Unfortunately, I just left him as he was going for that pull. I didn't think that he was going to get the pull in time. I just barely missed that rough. So a bit of a miscommunication. I could have helped Drage with that pull. Uh, but as I said, I thought, uh, I thought he would have not opted to go for it because rough still had sandbags but anyways 10 seconds left uh we're looking in a really good position here dredge goes for the pool but i'm not in a position to really help him here and unfortunately i miss like one penny shot if i would have hit that on the roughs we would have got the win so a couple of miscommunications there uh probably the first one my bad second one 
Uh, probably weren't really in position to help Dredge down. We didn't really need to go for pull. We could have just came back. We would have been in a fine position. But anyways, it's good to look over these things. No blaming, just learning from mistakes. So yeah, that's going to be the uh, second game of Bounty. Let's hop into number three. All right, guys. So going into the last game of Bounty, currently 1-1 in this set. So they've gone with a Poco double tank combination. So uh, a combo we're pretty much scared to face off against but kind of know how to play against it so with mortis in his comp i don't think mortis is great especially with this combination we kind of learned it ourselves we went a lot of mortis in scrims and kind of realized that mortis wasn't really a good pick so yeah the main reason why mortis isn't great is because you've got the gene knockbacks so you've got three gene knockbacks you have a tick basically uh, tom's just going to keep his head for the majority of the time especially when mortis dashes in he's not going to be able to do anything if we're all grouped up so yeah i'm going to be focusing on the ball uh, because, as I said, we've got so many different features that we can just knock back that uh, Mortis. We've got pre uh, Bull in... Uh, I was going to call him Primo. Then. We've got Bull in Spawn there. We're able to take him down. Tom has got his super as well. I completely forgot to say. Tick has his gadgets. So you've got three uh, Gene gadgets. You've got three Tick gadgets. You've got Tick's head. You've got so many things that can cancel out a Mortis. So Mortis does bait out the uh, Tick head. But by the time that Mortis is going to heal up, he's going to be... Uh, he's going to be taken down by something else so he goes in alone there which definitely isn't a play you always 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 want to wait for your teammates to come up unless you've completely hard counter them you want to wait till your teammates come up so we're, yeah we're just we're just staying together as you can see here uh drage nearly has like 8k hp tom nearly has 6k hp as a tick is doubled his hp because of how much value we're getting drage has seven stars here and just basically it's nothing that these guys can do they've they probably, to be honest, need to play a lot more aggro in the early stages if they want to win this matchup, just because of how many gadgets we've got left. I've got Super here, able to cancel him down. A nice a gene pool from uh, Drage. And this, yeah, we've just played it beautifully. Uh, it's not <laughs> not many times we've played uh, this comp against this type of comp. Much more perfect than that. And you just love to see it. So that's going to be the final bounty game going down right there. We're able to take the 2-0 dub on Noble Elite as well. Let's hop into the next matchup. All right, guys, so heading off against Totem. Definitely our hardest matchup so far. Totem are definitely, I would say, a top six team in the region. Uh, near enough bridging the gap towards the top four. They're just such a strong team. So we've opted with the roughs on this map. This is a really terrible play for me. I don't know how I'm losing lane versus surge, especially with my sandbags. Uh, I think I misplaced, well, mistapped my gadget. I'm able, well, somehow to lose that matchup. But anyways, we uh, stay calm. You know, mistakes like that happen. We just got to get through it. So... We get a good early pressure with VR loose. So normally you want to always go Lou and Amber. But we just felt like the roughs combination. Especially considering how much these guys love playing Surge. That we're going to be really good in the long run. So I'm just going to wait for my super here. So Soy does TP in. We get nice pinch on him. We're able to take him down. I'm really close to my super. Uh, they're not really in a good position to get too much value out of this uh, loose super here. I'm able to get my first upgrade. Just going to throw this off to Drage. He's going to be even more tankier. And being able to stay in mid for such a... Uh, time i'm able to get a pinch on mara here we're able to take him down so what they're trying to do here is switch lanes between uh between that surge and roughs because obviously roughs hard count is surge amber hard count is rough so if you switch match we're gonna have a better time but i just absolutely wrecked the amber down the lane there i'm uh, doing a good job of just ignoring the surge for now i've got the upgrade on tom and drage so all they're needing to do these two can just group up and i can just keep uh pushing these guys back so we're going to try and get some more time here. I think I put some sandbags down here. Yeah, I do remember this one. So I think I get one shot. Yeah, I get... I get what... I knew that was what happened. I got one-shotted by that surge. That is so unlucky. He dealt like 4k damage to me <laughs> with one shot. <laughs> Which I just definitely didn't expect. So we've got a really good lead here. Played it super, super well. And we're... Basically, there's no way we're going to be able to... Actually, not able to get this. Because we've got upgrades. Uh, we've got the pressure, and there's, yeah, there's just no way these guys can really make it back. Tommy's going to be healing, getting his armor back as well. He's going to push it in. I'm just going to work my way around the loot super. I'm able to take the first game. They're looking really strong. Let's hop into the next game. All right, guys. So going into the next game, we've opted for Gene and Max Amber because uh, for some reason, like Gene and Max are still really good on this map, and they're going with the Penny pick. So Penny, we've tried it out a few times in scrims ourselves. A really good pick on this map. We didn't believe it would be too, too strong, so that's the reason why we didn't go it, but they've opted for it in this case so Drage does a good job to get a trade there probably fed penny a little bit too much but 
uh, regardless, we're able to take a little bit of lane position in. Amber should have probably been the one to push up down the lane, so I think we recognize that. We'll get the uh, Drage, while well, we get a Max and Gene in the middle here. Drage doing a really good job of pushing up. They get a Penny Turret down, but I'm just going to Gene pull uh, the Penny Turret. Break up a bit of wall as well, so that is wasted. Uh, they get some really good pressure here, see Mari with a super, especially uh, the way he's able to cycle supers. He's playing it extremely, extremely well here. So Drage does go down. Looking in a pretty bad position here. They've got all the control. And Penny's working her way onto the turret. So also before the game, uh, I'd like to mention that we were really considering a max ban. Because these guys just love Gene and Max. And uh, to be honest, even though we've got good Gene and Max players, just synergy together. Uh, we've not really practiced with it too much. And we just know these guys love a lot of aggressive combinations. So uh, was one of the brothers which we should have banned. But yeah, anyways, going into it, we were able to regain control here. But they have a Penny turret. And look at this Penny turret. Uh, well, I think we actually... Oh, I thought I was super that one. No, that definitely must have been in a different game. Uh, but we're able to chip these guys down. Again, probably should have switched up the matchup. Actually, no, we've got some good mid pressure here. I'll get a really nice pull on the Penny there. Unfortunately uh, enough, I don't even know if that was really worth the pull because we're still all really weak. We didn't manage to actually capitalize on that gene pull. I'm going to get taken down here. Drage, I thought he lagged there, but obviously, <laughs> that was some weird tactic. He's able to take him down. Drage, uh, well, Tom, I mean... Able to suicide up and get some pressure. So this is a really intense game. Honestly, could have gone either way. Drage with a nice bit of pressure there. Probably a little bit too aggro, uh, but not too much. I mean, Tom's going to be able to get some good pressure there. Barely, Mari's able to stay alive. And I think that's what looks like to cost us. This penny turret is just destroying me. It's just constantly. It's another thing that I'm having to worry about. And they're able to take home the next uh, game. So yeah, really intense game there. Couple of missed micro plays. Maybe we could have gone our way, but overall probably just gets too much value to Penny. That was just able to chip us down in the long run. So yeah, that's going to be the second game right there. Let's hop into number three. All right, guys. So hopping into the third game of Hot Zone. So we've opted with this combination. We were really thinking about a Sprout or a uh, or even a Penny of our own, but we've opted for this comp uh, just because Lou and Scrims has just been so, so good that majority of the part even against gene max you can just uh, cycle really well so dredge gets an amazing double kill here so uh, looking really smart here i've been able to get a lot of pressure just the main thing is we can't feed that penny turret too too early so a uh, good pressure from tom here max is just a free kill for him like there's, there's nothing rock can really do as a loo uh i remember seeing a few people like oh, spence missing every shot but what can he actually do against a max especially with his speed as a loo loo probably has the worst mechanics in terms of pure shooting in the game it's so so hard if you guys have played him in any sort of like high power league game matchmaking uh well trophies or just in competitive lou it probably is the most frustrating ruler to play with because it's just so hard to constantly hit shots with uh but anyways don't think i need to excuse myself uh in that sense so my super is a little bit off here so as you can see it's really crucial uh, even from majority part, if you want to get uh, your super out with Lou, you've got to make sure that you cover the entire zone. So they were able to literally slide it a little bit on the zone. If I would have got it on the entire zone, I would have got a lot more value and probably able to cycle my super much better. But yeah, the Gina Max uh, just completely wrecked me. There's nothing. There's not too much I can do without my super. So I've got amazing mid control here. Uh, Dredge with some taps. I'm going to use my super over here. Uh, so I didn't put it bang on in the middle there because I believe we had more left side control so i'm able just to put it a little bit more aggressively on the right hand side here so dredge he's going to be hanging out in the middle because he's got that level which uh obviously these guys group up he's going to be able to get some insane value here so we're actually looking pretty decent we got that penny turret taken down but these max speeds are a little bit too much dredge with some really nice taps uh tom with some really good pressure we're all pretty low here nice super from tom but this penny turret again is what saves us i just don't understand how like penny really works in this meta we've still not experimented it too much we're just probably definitely underrated so dredge gets taken down with his level uh, i'm trying to get maru down here I'm able to take him down i do tank some penny shots and with 12 percent left it's, it's going to be really hard for us to do too much so dredge in the center here they've got really good pressure though with its penny turret dredge just go down and somehow we managed to stay alive for a little bit longer i use my loose super up a bit higher he's super super low there can't manage to take him down but i think regardless if it would have got a kill or not they would have been able to get it so yeah they've just got more pressure overall in the end they're able to take that hot zone set right there super super close probably should have uh i got that second game there should have closed that one down that one 
was a bit more rough because of the loot in the middle. But yeah, that's going to be that game right there. Let's hop into set number two. All right, guys. So going into the next game of Gem Grab. So this one is a bit of a painful one, to be honest. So they have a Gene Max, Sandy against Sprout and Ruffs. Pretty much the biggest hard counter you could get uh, other than like Poco Double Tank. But even then, I think Poco Double Tank is a better matchup than this. So, soy. He's sneaking around in the grass. I think he tries to use Gadget here, but some nice uh, shots from me are able to take him down. So yeah, this uh, combination is going to be really hard to deal with. And to be honest, I don't know really... Well, I don't know. Sprout uh, was actually going to be a decent pick, but yeah, against this, this is going to be really hard. Stridge gets taken down uh, there. Tom trying to get some good value, but Sandy does cycle that super. This is going to be uh, the thing that changes the game, really. Just allowing this Sandy to get super just chain it so so well can't really uh be affording to do that so again they're just all clumping up together trying not to give myself more value i get pinched down here uh but to be honest i'm just going up here to waste as much time as possible they're both really weak so i think if anything that somehow worked out really well for us but they're just making it so messy we can't deal with it with a rough and sprout it's just not much we can really do so uh dredge gets in nice a uh, kill there but those sandy supers sandy's just been a pain in the old game they've been in our face the entire game and it's just really not gone our way. So they're, they're going to comfortably uh, take home this game. Uh, to be honest, I don't really know what we could have done differently. Obviously, the comp wasn't the best against their matchup. But in terms of like uh, combinations that we could have gone, uh, we didn't really know what to go. Because for the bands, we've not really practiced too much with it. We always practice for like bell and play, they ban bell. Uh, it was just a bit wild. We didn't really expect G Max Sandy like that. That was a pass meta. That was kind of crazy. So yeah, they completely out compass to be honest, and just play so much better than us in that game. So that's gonna be that one right there. Let's hop into number two. All right, guys, so hopping into game number two of Gem Grab. To be honest, another painful one for us. So uh, I didn't really want to go too much. Uh, G Max, I thought that they just played it really well, and it was just more so that we had two brothers that can't real deal with aggro. In scrims, there's hardly any Gene Max at all. Probably Ring of Fire, honestly, is the map I've seen Gene Max played the most. So I weren't really too confident going Gene Max, but it gets some good, nice early pressure here. But the thing is, with their combination, they're going to be good in the long term, especially get that Penny to it up nice and protected. They're going to be really good. So I think the reason they went Penny, they probably were expecting a Ruffs again. People have been going Penny to count the Ruffs, and we're a team that really like playing our Ruff combinations. So see here. Rico getting a lot of value. I've told Tom to switch. Well, we've called out for Tom to switch lane onto the Rico. Uh, just because Drake's going to have a much tougher time against that Penny. So Penny gets that turret up. I'm going to have to waste Gene Pool to get that down, I believe. Uh, I don't know if I really... I don't know if it's to play. Like We do that a lot with A-Bit turrets and a lot of other teams do. When you just super the A-Bit turret just to get it out. I'm going to also break a bit of cover. Maybe I shouldn't have... Uh, maybe we should have just uh, gone for a kill there. But unfortunately... They all just collapse on us. We're really, really weak here. Drage tries to get some nice pressure, but they're able to take him down. So, yeah, as I was saying, this is it's just straight pain. This, this Penny Turret is just destroying us in the spawn. They've got all the pressure. They're in our bush here. This is like the worst thing that we could have possibly done. So, I'm trying to push up here, but it's not much I can really do, especially when they've got Gene Pool. They've got a Rico in position. We're kind of just screwed at this point. Uh, so, yeah, I think for me mainly, like, Totem are a good team, but we just didn't have comps prepared. We don't, definitely weren't as prepared as we normally are. Uh, so, yeah, they're going to be able to just wreck us with two comps that just completely hard counter us, which is it's, it's unfortunate, but it's fair play. They've done their homework, and a lot of times uh, comp will come down to literally whoever has the best comp will win. So, I think that's more so in this case. Nothing too much to really worry about. Uh, on our end just needs to put a few more rounds in in terms of scrims and again it's Drage's first time competitive so people got to cut us some slack and especially Drage some slack because he's young he's still got to learn uh, as well we, like, he's a godly player but obviously we need to learn and be a good team together so unfortunately we go down to Totem there 2-0 not what we wanted especially after beating these in ESL uh, before and yeah, GG's to Totem, they played absolutely insane. So one last game to go through. Let's jump straight into it. All right, guys. So going on to Siege, Nuts and Bolts up against a Bunker. So Bunker also, I think right now, are like the sixth uh, best placed team in EU. They've consistently made monthly finals. Really good team consists of Boss, Mummy Jordan, and Darkum. So a really good team again. So we face four top 16 teams at least in a row, which is something uh, we don't really like play against, especially in the earlier rounds. So... Uh, the bands were as well. Poco, Bell on their side, Stu Primo on our side. So nice uh, start from us being able to secure that first round. 
I think I believe that we couldn't get the first uh, bolt there, but we didn't panic. We're able to clutch up. So Max for me, I really unsure on why they went Max. I don't know what they're trying to counter. Maybe they went Max because they were scared of tanks or something. I'm not really too sure. So here I'm just trying to get some extra shots on this. So I'm gonna say on this siege. Safe there, but I mean the Ike. <laughs> I'm going a little bit crazy. It's been a super long day, guys, but yeah. I'm um, able to get some nice shots onto boss. So I'm just going to mainly be focusing on. I need to sprout there, so I'm trying to get a shot onto Darkum. Uh, just put Troll in the middle for now. Need to be careful because in a sprout 1v1, I believe we basically free shot each other, so I've got to be really careful. Tom with a nice super there. Able to get the bolt a little bit closer to me, so I know uh, boss is really weak. I'm just going to place a wall there just so it's uh, easier for me to confirm the kill. I don't really need my wall, uh, obviously, on an offense, really, because I can just cycle it, especially from the enemies that are defending. So we've got a second round there, and we're in a really good position for third. That's what we're mainly focusing on towards the end of rounds, is trying to get a good bolt position for the last siege bot. So these guys defend it pretty well here. They've got the speed uh, getting these guys on the map. I get the taps onto boss, because basically he's going to be the one that's going to be getting him back into the game. So I've got a nice super onto BB there. Able to block him out the mid for the meantime. Maybe I could have used another gadget to prevent them from going to the right. Anyways, we're able to get that one there. Tom with a nice kill on the max. Do miss a couple of shots there on uh, boss. Could have maybe made it so we're able to... Well, it didn't really matter, didn't it? <laughs> I just realised that uh, this one the game I was really uh, thinking of. But we're able to comfortably take that one. So we went all three siege robots there. Able to take that one down. Let's hop into the next game of Siege. All right, guys, so jumping into the next game of Siege, we've opted for uh, Sprout, Barley, and Carl. Again, not really a fan of his comp whatsoever, but uh, mainly Tom thought it was really, really strong, so uh, we kind of opted for this combination. I mean, Barley can be good against BB and a Carl with a slow, uh, but the thing for me is it's just that Sprout. That Sprout can free tap the Barley, and it just does an amazing job. You can see that boss just gets the kill on Tom, which is a bit fortunate on their end. Uh, but regardless, they're able to get the first robot. Like, the thing is, especially when in this mess, the Sprout is just so, so good. Uh, Sprout does a good job against the Gene. That's why you're not seeing too much Gene right now. And uh, Sprout just does an amazing job of pinching down the lanes. And if it's like a squishy lane, like a Barley, especially when we don't have a heal as well, it can uh, often lead to just Sprout just pinching out too much. So I don't really get the base, uh, best wall placements there. I don't know what really happened to that defense, but... Boss only really gets like 12% uh, there, so not really perfectly defended by myself. So I'm going to be going down the left here, get some nice snipes on Carl. Dredge is going to gadget into the middle, get some good pressure for now. Darkroom is really weak here. Uh, I actually missed both those shots, which Darkroom could have really punished me on. Uh, I'll go into the middle here, I believe, that they actually get this round, or it's a draw. Can't actually remember. I think we might just narrowly get it. So uh, I've used Super here just because I thought. We're going to draw, but we're narrowly uh, are able to get that round. Unfortunately, Tom does go down, which is probably the worst scenario that could have happened because Barley is going to be your main damage dealer. But uh, to be honest, when there's a Sprout on the enemy side, and even though we have a Barley, we're going to struggle to get damage because you just see here the aggression that they just hold. The boss is literally on 20%. Uh, yeah, 20% left on his HP. And we're obi we're only able to do 25%. So even with Barley in the matchup, unless you get the last robot, it's going to be really hard to get any sort of damage. So here, they're in an amazing position to get this Siege robot. We need to collect literally every single bolt. That's we're not able to get this round. So we really need that bolt on the left. I think we could have actually tied it up. Uh, but unfortunately, I just missed... I think I just missed a shot on uh, that call. But I'm actually going to rewind it. I don't actually do this too often most commentators. But let me see... If I could have maybe, yeah, that one shot maybe could have uh, made it so it was a tie. So, uh, I don't know. That was, that was really close. Probably being a little bit too critical on myself. But uh, we're, we're in a tough position here. Even with last with uh, Sprout, you can't really guarantee yourself a full defense. So, here I'm just trying to buy as much time as possible. I do end up killing Tom there, but I kind of have to. There's no other way I can actually defend have a robot there so unfortunately we do manage to lose, lose that siege game out there uh I just, I just think it's a bit unfortunate that we couldn't get any more damage then we probably would have won that game actually uh thinking about it so yeah that's going to be the second game of siege right there let's hop into number three all right guys so jumping into the final game of siege so literally uh about 20 seconds before going into the game uh did make the call of thinking about going triple tank because triple tank is so good in this meta and they're not really going like a lot of genes so i've really thought that they'll just stick with like at least a bb and a sprout or a coal 
I knew they were going to switch, uh, at least keep two of those brawlers. So the comp we've gone is just really good. Like a Sprout is going to really struggle against tanks. Uh, even if you have tank counters, like a Sprout is just going to have such a hard time. So we're able to get a first robot there. So basically the callouts in this game that I'll, I need to get on ball. Uh, I, know, I need to get on ball. B as a ball needs to get on the Mortis as much as possible because Mortis can do a good job against BB and Frank. So I've just got to fire around the Mortis, but not at the same time, not giving too much value. So you can see here, Tom's using Power Grab. Uh, we did opt to try that out in scrims a few times, uh, a few times before this. And I just think Power Grab is actually really underrated in this meta, especially now uh, that Frank basically gets his super off of uh, taking damage. So you can get that super a lot more. And just one kill, you're able to keep that power graph for like 12 seconds, which is a lot of time, especially if you're getting damage uh, on the enemy Ike or even just defending in general. Like you can two shot a lot of runners. So Tom gets the power grab again. You can just see just a lot of damage. So you can see here, uh, we've got another robot and we're in a good position. I think we've got three bolts for last. So here, I probably waste uh, my dash here, try and catch um, Mummy Jordan off guard there. Just did a good job to actually get away. Tom misses the stun on the call. Godless is. <laughs> it's looking good for us. It's, it's looking messy as anything. Everything is everywhere right now. We're still looking really good. So I'm going to try and keep the matchup on here. Uh, but it's still because it doesn't matter how good of a mortis you are. As long as I'm preserving my shots, it's nothing a mortis going to be able to do. So an amazing play from BB's, well, what, from Dredge. He's able to read it. I'm just going to charge up on Sprout, force him to have to make a play. And we're going to be able to win that round really easily. So to be fair, a bit completely hard counts from this. Unless they just played it completely perfectly. I don't think they really stood a chance. Especially how good uh, Triple Tank's defense is as well. Even if we lost, lost a robot. Like we can just do insane amounts of uh, damage to the robot coming off. You got Bull. You got Frank with Super. You got BB. Oh, we're going to be able to defend really easily. So that's going to be Triple Tank right there. We're able to take the first set home against Bunker. Let's hop into set number two. Alright guys. So jumping into the first game of Brubble. So to be honest. Just from the get go. I feel like we made a mistake with our combination because, again, I kind of just called out these guys. Uh, I don't mean to seem like the guy that always does it, but I generally did just call out that these guys would go barley because uh, for us, this is like the standard comp that we always go. It is a good combination, but as you can see here, they've just literally, they've hard countered it. They've gone to barley to counter the roughs, and then they've gone to Vitara to counter the surge. So we're going to have a really tough time, especially until we get our roughs wall break. We wasn't too scared against the barley because... Uh, we can just keep switching lane but they do an amazing job of also forcing the lane switches as well so tom's going to be trying to switch tara straight away he's not having it uh well darkum he just switches lane immediately so really well played from them to get the favorable matchups uh but yeah so all we're really waiting for is tom to get his wall break we'll break one lane and then we're going to be pretty decent against a body uh we do opt for the corner which again i i normally agree with especially if uh, especially if you've got a bad matchup. Like, we have a bad matchup here, but it's obviously winnable if we use uh, the rough wall break. So, I think I think we should have just kept the ball in the mid position and just kept eyes on it. I didn't really think we needed to corner it there. So, you can see here, Tom does a really good job of getting Barley low. And this is where I kind of wanted to have ball possession because they were all low. Maybe in this situation, we could have done something. Tom nearly manages to get a kill on Barley. That would have been really clutch. But right now, we're in a really tough position. Like... He's got 3k. Barley's got super. We're going to get flushed out so easily. They're going to be able to, uh, well, probably more than likely, cycle some kills on us. So, Boss gets a 3k shot on me there. Uh, not too much I could have really done in that situation. Maybe I could have planted my gadget there a little bit quicker. Drage manages to stay out alive, but it's just such a bad position to go in because Barley just gets so much zoning potential on you. See here, we're all grouped up. Maybe one of us should have took a death a little bit quicker, but I just still think in this scenario that uh, there's just no way that we're going to be able to defend it unless we literally one of us uh, died a lot sooner. I just think Corrin just made it so these guys just pressured us even more. So on respawn, it's probably the best chance we have to score. Uh, Dredge probably a little bit too aggressive there because we still had time to work together and pinch, but regardless, I don't, I don't really think we were able to score in that situation anyway. So yeah, they're going to take the first game of Rubble right there. So pretty well played to those guys. Constantly getting the favorable matchups. Let's hop into game number two. All right, guys. So heading into game number two up against uh, same mirror comps. So we just thought this combination is just really, really good. You got a Tara basically to deal with what is like Surge and just tanks. But, you know, you got to remember Poco is in play. Uh, so got to be really careful of that. So the B and the Tara is going to be really good against that. 
to see some really nice pressure from Tom. He's able to get Tara into the corner. So with one of the first interaction, maybe could have been a little bit more aggro. Got some more values. So uh, wow, boss. Boss with an amazing 3k snipe onto Tom there. Also gets a nice shot onto me. I've got to kind of fall back because uh, Darkroom's pushing up. I just narrowly, literally narrowly miss Vitara there. 3k shot onto Tom as well. I felt like Boss was just connecting his 3k shots a lot on the lanes. I don't know if that's either a misplay from us or just uh, him hitting some nice shots. I think we probably should have uh, just been a bit more cautious of his 3k shots. So Boss tries to go for that play. There's a nice tank from Tom. I do read the shot there. I just basically know. I just have to catch it. I just have to be there. It doesn't matter if I can't clear it. If I just catch it, we're able to defend that. So uh, here in this moment, I believe I did call just to switch lanes. I know in a Bali versus Bali matchup, uh, it's really hard to retake it. But I just think uh, in this retaking position, it's hard to actually gain back control. So Tommy does win this lane against Tara. But Dre's just going to have a really tough time of pushing back. So I get free kit. Well, I give free k to uh, boss there. Tom with a really nice flush out to the Tara. Drage does get 3k there, which is unfortunately going to lose him lane. And especially with Ball in our corner, I've got to be really careful here. So Boss, he's uh, doing a really good job in mid here, to be honest. Like He's he's commanding that middle really well. Do get Drage down here, trying to waste as much time as possible. But I just don't think there's much we can do in that scenario. They just collapsed in at the same time and just had, just had way more control. Boss playing really well. And I think it just stemmed... Uh, from that 3k shot from B, taking down Drage, and then they just collapsed in on us. So really well played from them. So still 30 seconds left. There's not a reason to really panic in this situation. All right, so resuming there, I think my Wi-Fi uh, cut out for a second there. But yeah, as I was saying, no re real reason to actually panic there because we've still got 30 seconds left. We can easily make a goal happen. We just need to communicate and push together. So got really good start here, Tom, on uh, MJ's lane. 15 seconds left, so you can see here, uh, nice snipe from me and nice hit from Tom. He gets his super in the perfect position. A flush out from Bali is so underrated. And this map, nice super from Drage. Somehow, Boss is nearly able to uh, get that out. I don't, I don't even know how. But anyways, wow, nearly out of breath from how much I'm talking. We're going into overtime. I get nice tap on Darkum. So does Tom. I get my 3k shot. Hit it on Mummy Jordan. He is one shot there. So basically winning that lane there for Drage. And then again, getting those taps onto Darkum is just insane. Basically, all overtime is, especially in a mirror matchup, is just whose B gets more taps. And fortunately enough, Tom calls out to uh, shoot down the right. He just basically puts his shots there. So the B has to make a decision to either run back, heal up, or just basically suicide to try and prevent that goal. But we're able to win there. So some really nice plays there. Kind of did pop off in an overtime. But again, it's just team communication, making sure we stay calm and get the dub. So that's going to be... Uh, game number two in Brubble right there. Let's hop to it. All right, guys. So going into game number three, and we've gone for a bit of a counter pick here. So we've gone with Sprout, a double thrower. Uh, what's Sprout, double thrower? Sprout is a thrower. So we've gone with Sprout and a thrower and Tara. What I should have said is Tara, double thrower. But anyways, uh, Sprout's a really good counter pick to uh, all three of his brawlers, really, because he's going to just dominate B in the middle. He's going to be able to get easy taps on the lane. So you can see here, I'm just going to get a tap on uh, MJ. Dredge, uh, well, Tom's going to finish him off. Unfortunately enough, I mean, Tom just can't finish off that B. Maybe I could have, I don't know. That was, that was just really difficult. We just couldn't get that finishing shot on. But it's no new, uh, need to panic, Sprout. Uh, as long as I'm not really choking my shots, we're going to be able to easily take these guys down. So I get two nice snipes onto Darkroom. Take him down and we just need to capitalize as quickly as possible. So we're able to take him and down there. 45 seconds into the game. I get a nice wall there. Basically forcing boss into an uncomfortable position. I get two snipes on him. Darkroom kind of just forced to go on the inside. I get some snipes on him. Tom takes him down as well. Drage with a super as well. I've got super. No way we're going to be able to miss this if I just super this in. So yeah, that's going to be the game right there. So some really well played moves right there. It's kind of risky for us to go sprout. Uh, but we just thought with a uh, barley slow with a uh, Tara could still possibly be poke up a tank. Whether they go that, but we go with a camp pick. We're able to take that home. So, yeah, it's been a super long video. I hope you guys enjoyed. I'm so, so drained uh, from all of these competitive games. Four really intense games right there. I had to be at the top of my game to uh, obviously progress. So, going into tomorrow, we've got three uh, rounds left. Uh, we're calling it five and one. There's only four teams that are six and oh, I believe. So, obviously, I think by the end of it, there'll basically be one team that are nine and oh. There'll be six teams that are seven, no, eight and one. 
and then one team that will be seven and two and there'll be a big tiebreaker for that so if you guys want to see it i'll be linking uh d2s and arts switch in the description uh below because one of those guys will be streaming it tomorrow make sure to cheer us on but yeah that's gonna be it for today's video hope you guys enjoyed don't forget to like comment and subscribe and i'll see you guys next time